So Dave, uh, Dave and I have been talking pretty in depth, uh, sharing you about that book. You've been talking about like the idea of like when, what is it we want to continue in our world, all those good things. But, uh, we're going to really sit here and talk about <laughs> AI and I was going to tell them about my journey in AI uh, and kind of the, the intent of what this uh, podcast started as. But uh, before I do that, like, like, how do we know each other? We go way back, Todd. <laughs> way back. Um, I remember you when I was uh, actually, before I even got my educational leadership uh, you know, certification. I remember at uh, Jasco Elementary, okay. you were working in the PD department way yeah. back then. That was, geez, that was probably 2005, six, something like yeah. that. Yeah, okay. And uh, uh, that was really when I first, I think, I knew who you were, but I think I had that first yeah. registered. And then, uh, then of course our work uh, when I was a uh, a newbie principal yeah. at Chasco a Middle School right. in uh, 2011 to 2017. Um, yeah. You were there and leaded me. Yeah. So, th well, that was, yeah. So that was for people who don't know, like there, I had this stint as an area superintendent where we worked in the Northwest. And that's kind of, I was even telling Dave, like one of the reasons why I want to process this AI thing, ideally with some of my former Northwest friends is because the work we were doing and it was, it was so crazy like that we also kind of related on the same level as far as our love of why we were doing what we were doing and so all of that like but uh so i but it gives me also a chance to reconnect with um yeah. with uh, people so yeah so you were a principal at chasco middle when i became the area soup and yeah. then fun fact or sad fact maybe like my last uh, thing that I did before when I was uh, when they were rearranging the superintendent level and I said I want to go back to being a principal mm -hmm. um, was Adams um, Memorial the night before mm -hmm. they the board was approving me to go to Southern Springs so yep. and you were the one who we said should lead that school so that's what led you over to Ch uh, Cruise Lake too is that that journey yeah things that changed the course of your life yeah. that was um that was that was something else and uh wow that is a uh, that that adam's death and tragically so and unexpected as it all was um yeah wow but, but um i mean i, I i'm I don't shy away from the emotion todd like, no like i, I want to sit in that moment for a second just for a second yeah um, because it was, um, it was instrumental in my life. And Adam obviously was a colleague, uh, at Cruise Lake. Uh, we were assistant principals together. Um, the man Back when was, Chris going, was the principal. Yeah. Chris yeah. Christoph yeah. was our principal and, um, uh, Adam was just gold, man. He was just, he always wanted to do it right. Yeah. Uh, maybe it was his military upbringing. Maybe it was just his <laughs> high sense of, of, of of integrity and like just the, of a high, what I call a high moral man. Yeah. Um, and um, but it was the job was hard on him. Uh, the first yeah. couple of years as an assistant principal, as a leader in a school, and is um, is mm -hmm. something else, man. Uh, yeah. And that was back then. I can't even imagine right. uh, that kind of pressure now. But um, but Adam was uh, he was a rock star, man. And I remember. I had no doubt he would be the principal of that school. Yeah. at some point and uh, I'm glad he was yeah and uh, another kind of interesting fact was there was just before I left the area superintendent to go I had gone to the training which was the Gallup Strengths <clears throat> training which is now all over but there was a core of us that went up to Washington DC and it was an awesome experience I wrote a song and I <laughs> but there was uh, when I came back I had to choose five leaders to do a strengths conversation with and give then they would give me feedback and to and yeah. kind of before I could get certified and Adam was one of those so just a couple weeks before his passing we had this really really powerful conversation about his strengths you know and about it what happened where he was at and what he was doing in his world and everything and it, it, even is what he saw as perhaps his future, like seeing that reality of things like this may be a part of a, a different journey or what have you. Mm -hmm. 
So when he passed, I now, to this day, I call it the Kennedy Principle, and I always refer to it regarding, like, he was 47. You have no, we have no idea, like, how long we're going to live. I, when I hear people saying over and over about, like, my retirement or my whatever that future thing that's going to make them somehow, like, super happy, I just, I think of the Kennedy Principle. I'm like, you have no idea. We like, don't know how long. And so just, in, what are we doing now with what we do have control? Well, and people that followed all the rules. Yeah. They exactly. followed all the yeah. rules. They did what we expect all productive people to do, right? Yeah. We, we, towards something, always towards something. And I think that that's the, the foundational impact of the Kennedy principle for me is now, yeah. now. Whether you're yeah. still in the now or whether you're frenetic and active in the now, up to you. But now, yeah, because it's all you got, right? Yeah. Which is why I jumped on the chance to sit here and talk with you today, man. It's always good to talk. <laughs> to you. I know. Well, and here's the thing: is it's like that has been. When I uh, retired, it was not to stop working, obviously. You know, I wanted to still continue with what it is that we were doing, like the, the Jasper standard, the thing about looking at the world. So trying to always say, all right, how do I do that in just a different arena by, by also being realistic? That's why I like that book that I want you to like, take it home since I uh, read it. But I watched a TED Talk, and I periodically, my random brain, like I want to find something. And there was a Sal Khan video about AI. And for some people who don't know Sal Khan, when we were in the Northwest, that was one of the things we tried to do was say, how do we use the Khan Academy for helping these kids who are maybe behind or ahead? Like, how do we try to differentiate instruction in different ways with this free resource? But we, I remember having conversations with the other principals and, and other leaders at the school about this. So Sal Khan's always been one of my heroes in that area because it was always so yeah. selfless. But he was sharing about his chat amigo that they put into the um, pro. They took the chat GPT stuff, the open AI, and they put it into that. And now it serves as like a personal tutor. So as kids are, and they walk and and he was standing on the stage in April and saying and saying, I never would have said this nine months ago. We have the ability now to give everyone the ability to do that. So we have, like, this is dramatically impacting our ability to help kids because we basically can give them an individual tutor that will, that's intelligent, and I didn't understand that yet. I, that's part of my journey. And so as I was sitting there listening to him and here, seeing him and he's showing it, and it showed, like, it would ask questions, you know, kind of prompting them and saying, well, what do you remember? What would you do last or whatever? And it just was patient and it's doing everything that an individual adult that was, that was educated and, you know, kind of provoking without giving the answers and all those things. That's what it was doing. And I, and he was saying like, like this is a game changer for the ability for children to work through barriers that we can't do basically in mass herds of classrooms. Like, and, it, 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 and so, again, not necessarily the answer, but it made me say, oh, I think I, need to, I think I need to listen a little more to that. Maybe I need to learn more about AI. And maybe I need to look at it from the perspective of, I'm not in the hamster wheel, like most leaders that are there, so just like our, our fears that came with the World Wide Web, that came with cell phones, that came with all these things, like what are the bigger things that maybe we need to think about? And maybe what I could do is go down that road and kind of document my journey with the goal of synthesizing it into pieces that are like helpful to think about or to look at things maybe a little bit differently because as I'm learning about them, I'm actually going like, oh, I think my peers would appreciate me and reminded of this because I don't think, I'm not that far removed from the, you know, the school. I'm not, like, I know I've been out. Like, You're still well positioned. 
So I'm trying to say, like, how do I learn but, this? But maybe with a, a, a bit of a, 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 a detachment yep. that you can afford at where you're exactly. at. Exactly. Right? So I'm like, maybe I could be a thought leader <laughs> for my peers in this area, right? Like, that I can say, like, all right, guys, like, let so me... Like, we're like just going to have a conversation. We're going to talk about stuff. And then yeah. we're thought leaders. Well, yes, exactly. Well, somebody has to get us to think about them. And... The thing is, I also know what it's like to be in a system.